welcome everybody to the first episode of the Black Perspective with Andle Mutama. Uh, today we're going to deal with a very complex subject, a very difficult subject because it is what determines South Africa. Now last December 2019, very quietly, our parliament actually passed a bill which is called the 18th uh, Amendment of the Constitution. This bill is about supposedly amending the Constitution to make sure that there's land expropriation without compensation. In fact, the Economic Freedom Fighters issued a statement um, on the 31st of December last year, 2019, and they said, amongst other things in this statement, this is the historic victory we all need as a country for true total decolonization to occur. Huh? That's what they said. This is the victory, the historic victory we all need as a country for true total decolonization to occur. So at the end, by the end of this particular segment, this show, we must make a determination. Is this victory or is it betrayal? The idea that finally in South Africa, we have now an amendment which is made public of the constitution, of section 25 of the constitution, that says there will be land expropriation without compensation. Now remember, when Nelson Mandela and white people negotiated the so-called democracy that gave us in 1994, the new dispensation, the one thing which white people made sure was in the constitution is section 25, which is also called the property clause. What it means is that if you want land as a black person, you must buy that land from white people. That is section 25. So this amendment, this bill, which now has been made public and we have until the 31st of this month, of January 2020, to comment. If you want to comment on the bill, you have until the month end to do so. Now there's this bill that claims finally it is amending it to give black people back their land. I've got news for you. This is just not true. What we have, rather, is what I want to call expropriation of land without land expropriation. Many people, of course, in South Africa are still bamboozled because they're celebrating. They believe that it is true, somehow land is going to come back. No, land is not going to come back. Now, let's just go back a little bit to where this whole started. In 2018, Julius Malema stood in Parliament and proposed that there must be uh, this amendment of the Constitution to bring about land expropriation without compensation. For the first time, the ANC, of course, of Ramaphosa and the EFF agreed and two parties, these two parties together, do have the two-third majority required to amend the Constitution. Let us listen to Julius Malema when he stood up in Parliament and actually made the proposal. We do not seek revenge. Though they caused so much evil in our land, we do not wish to for their suffering, though they caused so much humiliation of countless generations. All we want, all our people ever wanted, is their land to which their dignity is rooted and founded. Today, let us close this question once and for all. Let us unite and pay no one for benefiting from the crimes against humanity. Let us come together and agree on this noble, historic, and human call to expropriate land without compensation for equal redistribution. Well, you heard it from him. That's what he said, that finally the land expropriation must happen. And there was an agreement between these parties. Well, you know, myself and my comrades were celebrated, but we were a little bit skeptical, you know, to say, but how is this actually happening? Let us just say that in South Africa, you can't understand South Africa without understanding the land question. And to understand the land question, you must go back to 1652 with Jan van Riebeek. Well, Jan van Riebeek is this white guy who arrived in South Africa with a gang, basically, of criminals. They uh, murdered people, they took our land by force, and in fact turned South Africa into what it is today, where white people are the lords, we are uh, the, um, if you like, tenants. But on land also, it's very critical to understand this, on these land relations, where we are landless and white people have the land, determines the fact that black people are poor, white people are rich. 
Black people live in squatter camps and in township and excluded. White people live in suburbs so well taken care of. It determines even the fact that white people are able to still to be racist because the power, social power, that makes it possible to white people, for white people to be racist come from the land uh, question. That is why Fanon, Franz Fanon, our father of black consciousness, makes this point about land. And I think we must quote him. He says, Fanon, for a colonized people, the most essential value, because it's the most concrete, is first and foremost the land. The land which will bring them bread and above all dignity. So the land question is, is, is not significant, it's fundamental in the identity of a people and a people without land are unpeopled. And this is exactly what is the condition of the black majority in South Africa. That is why when we say, as I, I will show furthermore, this land expropriation bill is actually about not expropriating land. This makes it such a big betrayal of our people. Because it, because it means we remain a people without dignity, we remain a people without bread, because we are a landless people. Well, let's just go back to where some of this debate started. In 2014, well, I was a member of, a member of parliament, as some of you know. In fact, I stood up in parliament, I think in my maiden speech, and I offered the ANC at the time, the 6%, which was the party I belong to, EFF, to say, here is the 6%. You, with your numbers, will have a two-third majority to amend the constitution to make sure that black people can build the land. There is a gift that, the, that has been given by Honorable Malema to the, to the ruling party. This gift is this. Here is a two-third majority required to change the constitution, particularly the property laws, to make sure that we are able to take land and distribute to our people who are paying a cent. This, unfortunately, this gift is a gift that I was going to say to you. Don't undermine it. Don't belittle it. Take it because this is the only way we can return the land stolen of our people. There's the only way we can make sure that there's dignity for our people. This is a gift from this party. What people don't know is that, in fact, I did not at the time have any mandate to do so. I, I took a long shot. I was pressurizing my own party to, to work with the ANC to address a big question. When I stood up in parliament and offered the 6%, no. There was no conversation that had happened in, with me, with my party, but I just wanted to make sure that there's a conversation amongst black people on this question. Of course, the ANC rejected that proposal. In fact, they ridiculed it. They made it like it's a crazy thing. Land expropriation is a bad thing. That's what the ANC did in, in the year 2014. Ch things did change. You know, uh, dynamics did change. When um, President Zuma at the time, as the state president, in the state of the nation address of 2017, President Zuma for the first time as a sitting state president actually shocks the nation. He says, we want land expropriation without compensation. I mean, I wanted to listen to that very carefully. I heard him say that. He repeated this uh, same statement when he addressed the other house of parliament, where he said, well, we need black people to unite to give us land expropriation without compensation. The sad thing is that the ANC's own party, now joining the EFF, rejected President Zuma's call for uh, land expropriation without compensation. It seemed to me at that point we should have realized that the agenda is not to bring about land expropriation without compensation. The agenda was to get rid of Zuma and then to bring this pretense of giving land to our people when in fact uh, this is not going to happen. There is, but why is it if we are all agreed that there must be land expropriation without compensation? Why are we getting land expropriation without land expropriation? Which is what we argue this bill is about. Both Julius Malema and in fact um, Ramaphosa agree that the black people must not get land. A lot of people forget that in 2015, Julius Malema went to address white farmers in power not far from Stellenbosch. In there, 
you know, he made guarantees to white people that land will not be taken from them. Their land will not be, he gave them guarantees. In that meeting, not only did he give them guarantees, he even asked for money from them. After he spoke to them, you know, they had wine and cheese, whatever else. They were taking selfies saying Julius Malema is a great man. One, some of the things that he said at the time to white people, and I want to quote him, he said when he, he spoke to those farmers, as long as it is productive farm, we don't have to interfere with production on that piece of land. Die wies wie van Boerlandse boere was woensdag aanteenwoordig vir die historische geleentheid by die Palmietvallei landgoed. Toe EFF leier Julius Malema genooi is om die perel gesprek voor hem aan te spreek oor hoe hy die toekomst van die landbouw in Zuid-Afrika sien. But the EFF speaks about something that many of you are very scared of, which is the expropriation of land without a compensation. Because the EFF believes that we need the most effective mechanism to redistribute the land into the hands of all South Africans. And what do we mean by that? We mean that government must be the custodian of the land. And the land that is abandoned and is idly should be expropriated to the benefit of all. And as long as that land is expropriated for public purpose and public interest, then it must be given a go ahead. So if there is a farm, a farm which is productive, and we know that that land is used for agricultural purpose, we don't have to interfere with the production in that piece of land. We ought to protect it. Do you hear what I'm saying? He simply told them that if you are farming productively, we will not touch your land. He says what black people want is unused land, unproductive land, reject land. This is important because this is exactly what Ramaphosa says. Ramaphosa has been over and over saying, okay, you can do your land exploitation provided it does not affect the economy, provided it does not affect white people. So what you have really here is um, an agreement between Julius Malema and Ramaphosa that, well, we will tell black people that they can get land exploitation without compensation, but this land exploitation without compensation will make sure that land still remain in the hands of white people. And, and if you look at this bill, this 18th amendment of the constitution bill, it's exactly about that, making sure that it says it gives us land expropriation, but actually it doesn't give us land expro expropriation without compensation. Why is this? It is because it does not deal with the big question, compensation. You see, Section 25 of the, con of the Constitution makes the provision that in any situation where you're going to take land or property, you must pay what they call just and equitable compensation. Just and equitable compensation is critical for Section 25. Now, this bill, which uh, you have a month to comment on, doesn't deal with this issue of compensation. What it does provide for is this really crazy idea that there must be an option for nil or zero compensation. That is what this, this bill says, oh, there must be an amendment of the constitution that says bring in a, as an option. One of the options. What are the other options? It means other options will remain market value. But one of the options that the bill says it provides for is for a zero uh, compensation. If you say it's compensation, why do you say it is zero? This is the height of sophistry. They play in political games with our people. But where does this come from? This idea of zero uh, compensation. It comes from two very interesting characters. Professor Ruth Hall and advocate Tembega Mugaitul. Now, Ruth Hall, Professor Ruth Hall, for a very long time she's been doing this work on land to make sure that she protects the constitution, she does not interfere with it so that white people's property remains secured, basically. Tembeka Nyogai Tobi, the, the author of this book, this very popular book, The Land is Ours. In fact, this book has got nothing to do with land. It's got to do with this idea that black people 
contributed in the constitution of South Africa. And, and this idea that if we want land, we must use the same constitution that says we must buy back our land. So they chose both Ruth Hall and this advocate to actually advise government on what must happen with land expropriation without compensation. This is of course after Julius Malema had said, oh, we're going to expropriate, and the ANC says, we agreed, and then they went to come around asking us questions, do you want land expropriation or not? Then our people went and said, yes, we want it, we want it. Then they went to listen to what Advocate Mukai told and Ruth Hall was saying. They were saying, no, don't interfere with the constitution. So the best way is to tinker with it and simply say that they want zero compensation. The biggest um, evil of this whole thing is when they say the second aspect of the amendment of this constitution is that a new act of parliament must be uh, promulgated to give effect to this notion of a nil compensation. Well, they're not telling the truth. In fact, already before the Public Works Committee in Parliament exists a bill on expropriation. That bill was published in December 2018. You see, that bill, it is the legislation they are talking about in this bill, the 18th Amendment of the Constitution. And go look at what they said in, 20, uh, in 2018. They said, well, land expropriation, that must be land that must be expropriated. A land which is land to abandoned land, unproductive land, land laying fallow, abandoned buildings, state land. So basically, all the unwanted land is what the land expropriation bill says will be expropriated. They have done that in 2018. They needed a justification because we were all waiting for when are they going to announce the land expropriation without compensation bill. So now they go to the constitution and they say section 25 must be amended to say zero compensation but there must be a law that says under what circumstances, in other words, which kinds of lands, properties would be compensated at zero. So their properties, those are my abundant properties, uh, abundant land, state land, is what this amendment, this new amendment seeks to justify. So in other words, I'm sitting with you here talking about um, a new amendment to the constitution section 25. There is nothing new about this. It is just a justification. And not only that, but also to mislead the nation to believe that this call that all of us have made for land expropriation without compensation has finally been answered. No. If you want to understand this, you must go look at what they said in the bill which exists, which is in front of the um, Public Works Committee, and that bill is very clear about which lands will be compensated, will be expropriated. Now we know. They went back and said the Constitution must say nil compensation for land which no one wants. This is the biggest, if you like, fraud that the politicians are undertaking in South Africa since 1994. There will be no land expropriation without compensation. This is a big hoax. This is a big fraud. This is a big betrayal of our people by people that these landless millions of our people have put their hope in their hands. These people, these leaders in parliament, unfortunately, serve other interests than